Welcome to this Inside Edition of Q30 Newscast. I'm here with Quinnipiac rugby star Alona Marr, who became an Olympian and dubbed the TikTok Queen by New York Post and other major media organizations. Alona, thank you so much for being here. Q30 is so happy to have you, and I know your time is valuable, so we'll just get right into it. Perfect. Let's um, do it. <laughs> how did you earn a spot for Team USA in the Olympics? So I played for the rugby team, and it was kind of my um, senior spring at Quinnipiac when I decided I really want to continue playing this. I was a nursing major, but I was like, you know what? Nursing is always going to be there. I think I want to continue and try out for the USA team. So um, I've made it my mission. I was in the weight room all day. Like I trained two times, three times a day, um, focus on studies and then got called up and have been training for three years with the USA team just to make the Olympics. So uh, it was a, it was a whirlwind, but it was awesome. That's amazing. Um, I know you start playing rugby at age 17, but prior to that, you played other sports. How did those sports influence your Olympic journey and rugby skills? Yeah, I would, um, for me, I played you feel lucky basketball and softball. And I think those shaped me into the athlete I am today because you learn so many different skills from all those different sports. Um, you know, from softball, you're learning hand eye coordination. Um, from basketball, you're seeing the you're seeing the field, you're seeing everything. Same with field hockey. So I think those really shaped me into a very good athlete. And you'll see a lot of my teammates as well. We aren't just we didn't just play rugby. We came up playing soccer. We have soccer players, hockey players, basketball players. Everything shapes you into a great rugby player. So what was the transition like from being a D1 athlete to Olympian? Honestly, I think the rugby team, Q rugby team, really helped me and made the transition very smooth. Um, they were on such a great program there. That's like, you know, it's taken seriously. It's um, supported by the school, which I think is so key. So it was really going from like one great environment to another one. So it was just effortless. So how was the training different? Training, well, it's kind of wild when all, all you do is focus on training and all you do is focus on rugby. When I was at Quinnipiac, I had my nursing classes. Sometimes I'd have to miss rugby practice to go to my nursing practices. I mean, to go to my nursing clinicals. So it was just wild that your whole life becomes training. And that's your job. I'm, I was training, you know, five hours a day and whatnot. And it becomes uh, your, your number one priority. Whereas it was kind of a balancing act at Quinnipiac. Right, right. So I know I saw this on um, the Quinnipiac athletic website. I know you're an environmental ambassador between Japan and your home state, Vermont. Um, when you were an ambassador, did you ever expect that you would end up performing as an Olympian in Tokyo? No, you know, I've always loved Japan. I went, so I was environmental ambassador my senior year of high school, and I've always loved Japan. And, and um, I just, and I was a, started playing rugby that same time I went there and never thought that I would be playing the Olympics there as well. And I think I, I still want to go back to Japan whenever I can, because I, I love it. And the, they did such a good job with the Olympics. So um, how was Tokyo? Tokyo was amazing. I, I've been saying this, like if anyone were to be able to host the Olympics in a pandemic, it's Japan. And they did such a great job with it. Um, everything was so perfectly timed. Um, greatest staff, the greatest volunteers, the nicest people. It was weird because there was no fans. There wasn't anything like that, but it was still such a special experience. And, you know, not many people will be able to say they went to an Olympics in a pandemic. Absolutely. So, yeah, I know you showed a lot of your experience at, of the Olympics through TikTok. Did you ever expect to become a TikTok star? Uh, no, I was just kind of, you know, TikTok and all these other platforms is a great way for us athletes to get ourselves out there. And TikTok also is a fun way to get people to, into rugby and to into my team. And I was using it a little bit beforehand, but still had minor growth. And then I think people just loved the humor and loved the non-pretentiousness, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, of my TikToks. And I was given the inside look of that athletes were not just, yes, we're, we work so hard and we're Olympians, but also we love to have fun. We're funny. And, um, you know, we're, we're also awkward and do all sorts of other things. Right, right. Well, I was actually going to ask you, I know in your other interviews, you did talk about how you use your TikTok platform to show the deeper side of athletes and how they're human, along with, like you said, the humor your team has. Um, what was it like bonding with and getting to know your teammates? It, I mean, it was such a special experience. I talk about that. It's really, it was the journey to the Olympics that was so important. Um, it was my teammates and the bond that we created by, you know, having to train in a pandemic, having to go through all this, having to not be able to play for a while. 
So um, you create such a bond with these individuals because you're working so hard for a goal that you all have. And um, I mean, they've just become my sisters and closest friends. Were they all on board with being on TikTok at first? They, they, so I t- I've kind of, you know, I've become the TikTok girl. And at first it was like, ha ha, kind of jokingly. But then I think they saw like, oh, wait, this has some power there. And we got people into rugby because of it. So I think they love it because they get to go along with it. And it's helping not only me, I feel like it's also helping them as well, getting them out there. Yeah. Like, how did it feel when you became popular on TikTok and you saw the influence you were making for, you know, rugby players? I think that was what was so great about it, is seeing that people were watching, tuning into rugby at the Olympics and, and you know, hopefully young girls, young boys were seeing like, wait a minute, I want to try that sport too. Um, it was so fun. I didn't really realize it because, you know, you're in, in a Tokyo and there's no fans or whatever. So all you see is what's on social media about people being into you. And um, it was really my mom and sisters and everybody else telling me back home, like the great impact I had. What advice would you give to college students who would like to pursue a career in their sport, whether it's rugby or just any sport? I mean, I think for me, the one thing is, is I was, it was a balancing act. So I'm so happy that I got my nursing degree because it set me up because athletics is a very hard career to go into and it's really not guaranteed. So get that degree for now and set yourself up. And then um, two, I think it's, it's going to take a lot of sacrifice and a lot of hard work, but it doesn't mean you can't have fun. You can't be a person. Um, it's just all about balance and really timing that out. Um, I mean, I was in the gym twice a day. I was doing my nursing clinicals. I had a senior capstone. I was playing rugby, but I also did go out. I had fun. So it's kind of like making sure your priorities are aligned and that not one is higher than the other because the Olympics are great, but it's such a small part of your life. Right. What was the pressure like when starting and transitioning from being a D1 athlete to becoming an Olympian? It was um, honestly fun. I think uh, it's fit fit really, really well to all of a sudden that's your goal and your focus. Um, I've always been so committed to sports and I love sports. So it was seamless. And I, um, I think it's really meant to be. I was meant to be a rugby player and I was meant to hopefully play for USA. So, yeah. What was the difference between preparing for the Olympics versus actually playing in the Olympics? I mean, it's so wild because you prepare so long for this one moment and then anything can happen. So um, it's not, it's never the same. And it's wild because there was no fans or whatnot. So it was different. And I think it was really the preparing that was special about it. The Olympics were so short, so small, but it was the preparing and getting close to my team that was so important. Alona, thank you so much for doing this. You are an inspiration for so many, and Bobcat Nation is very proud of you. We always have been and always will be rooting for you. To find more stories and content, download the Q3TV app and check out our website, q3tv.com.